I feel like nobody should alter their body chemistry for anybody else but themselves. Well, you hear that, guys? Most girls don't even find enhanced physiques attractive. Coach Greg, in today's video, one of the most important videos you could ever watch. Investigating the fitness industry's steroid epidemic, and it is, in fact, an epidemic. I've been involved in this sport for years. Remember, I started lifting weights at 10. I'm 48 years of age. I abused performance-enhancing drugs for over 10 years, and not only that, I used to sell them, and so I do believe I know a thing or two about this. Jesse Names, he covered this video. He interviewed not only me, but several other fitness influencers, and so we're going to get to the bottom of it. What is the problem, what's going on, and what do you need to know? I actually don't know that much about steroids, but I think I know who might. And so Jesse alludes to what is one of the biggest problems, is that people don't know enough about it. With knowledge comes power, and if you don't know about performance-enhancing drugs, the good, the bad, and the ugly, how can you possibly make an educated and informed decision on whether or not you should be taking them? So I wanted to see if the industry and its enhanced athletes are causing more harm than good. Ugh. I'm here to find out the truth and nothing but the truth. Is it in fact a plus or a minus that many people are speaking openly about performance enhancing drugs? We have channels like mine, Derek, and many others who openly discuss the benefits, the pros, cons, the negative consequences of taking performance enhancing drugs. Many people, they criticize us. You should not be talking about this. You're promoting drug use. Are we really? Would you ever take steroids? Probably. I want to get big. Oh, you would? I want to get big, yeah. You want, would you, do you want to look like Sam because, and that's why? Yes. And so clearly we know that many people are going to want to take steroids in order to look like their favorite social media influencer. Problem is, the majority of people taking these steroids are not going to look like these influencers. The influencers that look the best, not only are they in fact on performance enhancing drugs, but they also have amazing genetics. And so unless you have those genetics, you could take all the steroids, SARMs, whatever in the world and still not have an amazing physique. So steroids actually in high doses, especially for some individuals at risk, can cause psychosis for which you can be hospitalized for. And so to me, this is basically fear mongering. I mean, let's be honest. Are you avoiding taking steroids? steroids because you're worried about psychosis for that one in however many thousands of people have experienced this. And I can tell you with certainty, having sold this in the past, people don't give two shits about their health. They don't care about their heart. They don't care about their cholesterol, blood pressure, and so on. But what they do care about is how are they going to look? They care about the aesthetics. Are they going to look attractive? Yes or no? Smash or pass? People want to look like their favorite social media influencers, the actors, guys like The Rock, superstars, celebrities, good looking models. They want to look like them. The pressure to look good, to fit in with society is greater than it ever was in the history of the world. And so with each passing year, with each brand new filter, people are experiencing greater and greater pressures to look good, more so than ever before. Sam Sulik's 21. How many people are going to look like him? C-Bum was taking steroids at the age of 18. Where does it stop? Where does it end? I know of folks that have had this and, and their lives went very downhill shortly thereafter. I know people who have gotten into physical altercations with the police while on steroids and were uh, they did not survive. How many of you are not going to take steroids because Mike Israel or someone else says, yeah, if you take steroids, you might go and do something you'll regret? Nobody, no one's stopping because of that. In fact, more people are worried about taking steroids because it could cause infertility to go bald, to have acne, gynecomastia, than anything else you could ever mention. The reality is, I don't even know where to get this stuff. So I decided to meet up with a former steroid dealer. Greg Doucette, Daddy Greg, Greg you, Sensei man. Greg. And so where could you actually get this? Let me give you a hint. Any guy who looks jacked, if they're buying it themselves, they know how to get it. Not only could they be getting it from someone for you, but if they have access to it, they could be giving it to you themselves. What often happens is one person who has a friend who has another friend and they all share and get the same thing. Think of it. And there are studies to back this up. You are like your five closest friends. And so if your five closest friends, if one of them is taking steroids, the chances are very likely that you are tempted to do so as well. If you have no friends that are taking steroids, you might think, oh, steroids is not a problem. But remember, I've been in the fitness industry for years, and most of the people in the fitness industry are actually taking steroids. And so if you're friends with people involved in fitness competitions and so on, you are going to be tempted. You might not admit it. You might not tell anyone about it. And yeah, I used to sell it. I used to sell it to people that lied to their wives, their husbands, their girlfriends, everyone. And why would they lie? Why do you think?
And half of these individuals, they didn't even look like they worked out. They don't look like they worked out. And so you're thinking, well, why would they take it? Why do you think they want to look like they work out? I want people to know about the dangers of this and how common it is. And, and being somebody that used to sell it, I, people think it's just bodybuilders. It's yeah. everybody. And so this is one of the major things you notice. People think it's just the bodybuilders, the biggest guys in the gym. But the reality is it could be anyone. Your brother, your sister, your mother, your daughter, your boyfriend, circle friend, anyone. And you can't tell just by looking. Sure, when you see someone that's so jack, so incredible, they're probably taking something. But oftentimes it's people who have 50 pounds to lose, maybe even 100, or guys that have just joined the gym and they have a dad bod. You're thinking there's no way they're not natural. And why would they admit it? Think of it. You're 250 pounds, 50 pounds overweight, and you can't bench 225 pounds. You're going to really say, yeah, I take steroids. People say, really? To look like that? Do you think that the fitness industry is glorifying steroids by chance? I think that indirectly that they are. Without even realizing it, I think that they absolutely are. Of course we're glorifying PDs. Look at all the competitions. Think of it. We're rewarding the best physiques in the entire world. And almost all of them are on performance enhancing drugs. And so are we not glorifying the use of anabolic steroids? I think we have to be. We can turn a blind eye and pretend that we're not. But if I'm being honest, I'm speaking bluntly, which I always do, of course we're glorifying it. If we were not, why are we rewarding guys who are taking performance enhancing drugs? Where it's not like we're saying, hey, if you show up to the Olympia with too much muscle, we're going to score you down? Are you kidding? Bigger, the better, the more likely you are going to win. And so what is my advice? What have I suggested that could possibly reduce the use of performance enhancing drugs in the sport? Reduce the weight classes. Remember in classic physique, I said, why don't we have another category where perhaps it's 20 pounds lighter per inch? 20 pounds lighter. And so rather than Seabum competing at 242 pounds, he'd then have to compete at 222 pounds. Imagine how much dairy he'd have to take or not take. And what would that mean? More realistic for most people. Most people could never reach the size of Chris Bumstead, Ramon Dino, or Wesley Vizard, Urs Kalisensi, and the list goes on. But with a reduced weight class, 20 pounds smaller, people could reduce their use of performance handing drugs and would give a new avenue for people to aspire to. But no, why would we ever listen to that coach, Greg? I know what we'll do. We'll ban him from judging. Let's copyright strike his videos and let's get rid of coach Greg faster than last time. After all, what good could he ever do for the sport? I mean, he literally made videos saying that men's physique, women's wellness, the competitors are too big and the weight classes in class of physique, they're not really fair. And what did they do? Well, they altered the weight caps for men's classic physique and they've instilled weight cap categories per height per inch for men's physique. And so if they were to continue to listen to Coach Greg and take my advice, they could perhaps reduce the use of performance enhancing drugs in sporting competition. Now remember, of course they could instill drug tested competitions, but we know from the past that this doesn't work. What is your motto for your fans? Like something that you could leave with them. Get big. Get big. If you could consolidate everything down to two words, it's just get big. Get big. And how are we going to do that? Well, we obviously know we're going to have to eat a lot of food if we're going to get big. But what else do you think he and many IFBB pros and other competitors are taking in order to get big? I'm not even going to answer that, but use your imagination. How exactly are we getting big? Because last I checked, when we talk about getting big, we're not talking about being sumo wrestlers. We're not talking about getting big and fat. We're talking about getting big and jacked. Any advice for someone that like you know looks up to you? I'd say first off, more than likely not counting the macros, more than likely not doing the cardio, not doing progressive overload. You know what my advice would be? Stop comparing yourself to Sam Sulik. The guy's amazing genetics. You are not Sam Sulik. Be the best version of yourself. And that does not include abusing performance enhancing drugs. You guys expect that all these fitness superstars are all natural? You really think Seabum is natty? That Sam Sulik's natty? That guys winning the Olympia are natty? Of course not. Compare you to you. Can you be better today than you were yesterday and better tomorrow than you were today? If you continue to compare yourself to other people, you are never going to be satisfied. Even if you were to get as big as Sam Sulik, you think you're going to be happy? No, you're going to pick someone bigger. Oh, I'm now the size of Sam Sulik. I now want to be Ramon Dino, Chris Bumstead, Wesley Vizzers. Where does it end? It doesn't end. Unless it ends with you inside of a coffin at an early death. I mean, these are things which you can optimize and make gains. 
It's not rocket science either. And so he ends the interview with, it's not rock science. And so what do you think all the kids watching this are really thinking? Do you really think they're just gonna drink a lot of chocolate milk, five guys, bulk up, train harder than last time, do 98% of their sets of failure, and wake up looking like Sam Sulik at five foot 11, 235 pounds shredded? Of course not. Take that desperation to like look like whoever, to, to be cool, to get a girl, whatever. What they want is to have the TikToker girls nod in your direction when you're at the gym. Yeah, why do you think that is? They want to look like their favorite celebrity, why? Because they want to feel accepted, accepted by society. They want to attract a mate. People know the majority of people getting girls are the chads, the best looking guys. And if you have a better physique, your chances are that much greater. The lifelong pursuit of us men doing everything we can to attract women. Well, let's ask the ladies what they think of enhanced physiques and if they even find them more attractive. And what is the point of asking girls what they think? They don't know what they want. Oh, I want this or I want that. I would never date someone who's enhanced. They're not telling you. Do you find steroided out bodybuilders attractive? I think more of like a, a, like a mild bodybuilding style I find more attractive. Okay. I don't like the big traps. <laughs> you know, Hattie Chopin and Samson do it a little bit too big for me. I'm into, you know, the smaller bodybuilders. You don't like classic physique. Guys like Wesley Vizers, Chris Bumstead, Ramon Dino. You know, small bodybuilders. And then when Chris Bumstead's in his off season, oh, he's got a dad bod. All six foot one, 260 pounds of beefcake has a friggin' dad bod. And so what chance do the rest of us have? And imagine this, even myself. Oh, Coach Greg, he's 40. He could never track someone under 40. He has a mid physique. Have you seen him with all that loose skin? If I have a mid physique as an IFBB pro, remember I used to be a former model. If I have a mid physique, I eat healthy, I do cardio, I train hard and last time. What do we need to achieve? I feel like nobody should alter their body chemistry for anybody else but themselves. Well, you hear that guys? Most girls don't even find enhanced physiques attractive. When a famous person has a microphone and is interviewing you and they have about 4 million followers and they say, hey, would you date somebody who's not enhanced, who doesn't have a freakishly amazing body? And they say, you know, I like all body types. I would date anyone. I would even date somebody who's under six feet tall and who doesn't even make $100,000 a year. You know when people are being interviewed under the limelights, they're scared to be their true authentic selves. They're not telling you what they think. They're telling you what they want you to think. They want you to think that, no, I would date anyone. It's not about looks. It's what's on the inside that counts. Is it really? But remember this. Remember when earlier in the video I said that the majority of people taking steroids don't even look average, don't even look like they work out? They're perhaps 50 pounds overweight and they just want to look good with their shirts off? Well, do you really think that these girls are not going to like them if they're taking steroids? Take an average built man, join in the gym, trains for perhaps three to five years. Even with steroids, they're barely going to look like they work out. And so do you really think that they don't like that enhanced look? An enhanced look in their minds is a guy like Chris Bumstead. But the reality is an enhanced look is a guy 50 pounds overweight who's trying to bench two plates for the very first time. There are people with average or below average physiques who want to look average. They simply want to look better. Well, the reason why people are using steroids is because they feel like they have to. The pressure to look good is greater than ever before. It used to be just on the women. But today, in today's day and age, with social media the way it is, men feel equally obligated that's right, obligated to appease the women and look a certain way. We thought maybe like a better physique would help. Now, bro, there's people who make a living off this who don't even have a good physique. Honestly, Alex Eubank is not correct. He thinks that just an average looking physique is going to get a lot of views. How many of you raise your hand think that Alex Eubank has an average looking physique? How about Will Tennyson or Tristan Lee or Coach Greg or Jeff Cavalier? Mike Thurston, Chris Bumstead, Jeff Nippert, the list goes on and on. Do they look like they have average looking physiques? I don't think so. I had to describe the one creator who had been transparent about their PED use, but hasn't glorified being enhanced and has built his brand off genuine positivity. It'd be no. 
I personally, I look up to you. And so he's 100% correct. Noel Diesel does not glorify steroid use. But also notice this. He doesn't like the way he looks. He's been very transparent about this. And he has a message. Don't do steroids. Don't abuse steroids. Be kind to yourself. And so if Noel were to take his own advice, do you think he would be on performance enhancing drugs? Why is Noel, who's not competing, taking performance enhancing drugs? I believe it's because he doesn't like the way he looks in his own skin. Think of it. He's over six feet tall and between 260 and 300 pounds of muscle. Yet it's not enough. It's never enough. And so if Noel were truly kind to himself, and I mean really kind to himself, would he not owe it himself to stop abusing performance enhancing drugs? He has over 5 million followers. He's not actively competing as an IP pro. And so why does he not at least go down to only using HRT? prescribed by a medical doctor, not go on any cycle whatsoever. Perhaps he dropped down to what? Six foot two, 220 pounds of muscle? Is that not enough? Would he not be healthier? And so why would he need to do that? I'll tell you why. Because he doesn't think he looks good enough. And why is that? Because social media has made him feel that way. And it's not his fault. It's the fault of the masses, of the pressure of movies, being raised in a world where you think you're never enough. And if it were not for this, why would anyone be abusing steroids? The reason the majority of people are taking steroids, it's not to win in sports, it's to look more aesthetic. And if we're trying to make a difference, what needs to stop is that people at the top the most famous, the ones with the most celebrities, they need to stop abusing steroids. Imagine this. Imagine if I say, hey everyone, I'm now going on a steroid cycle. I can't wait to blast test and trend. Yeah, we're abusing PDs. We're going to go on more pre-workout than last time. Do you think that would encourage the use of steroids or discourage it? In comparison, I used to abuse performance enhancing drugs. I used to even sell it. But since that time, what has happened? I've stopped, but yet many people will try to put me down. You're a hypocrite. You used to abuse steroids. Yes, but I stopped. To me, this would be analogous to somebody who was morbidly obese for 10 years of their life and suddenly said, you know, this is not good. They stop eating. They then become healthy. Imagine if Nicocotta Avocado said, you know what? I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. No longer is he three or 400 pounds. He's now dedicating his life to being healthy. Would you then be critical of Nick Avocado Avocado if for five straight years he did nothing but try to discourage its use and promote being healthy? Because that's literally what I've been doing. Do I promote the use of performance-enhancing drugs or do I in fact discourage it? I tell you, I explain the pros, the cons, the goods, the bad, the ugly. I'm very honest, I'm open, I'm transparent, I'm not lying, I'm telling you the truth. The goal of this video was to explain the reality of steroids. I want you guys to walk away feeling confident about yourselves, not comparing yourself to other people online. But if you are gonna go down that route, do it right. Exactly, don't compare your other people, compare yourself to yourself, and only after you've reached your older years, once you've achieved your natural genetic limit, and with the advice and consent from your doctor, and if you don't break the law, never break the law, only then should you consider doing it. If you're a teenager, are you kidding me? You're not even close to old enough, not even nearly old enough. There's a right and wrong way of doing everything, and if you guys aren't getting on stage and making a check, from this sport, I don't think it's necessary. I always hate when I hear people saying, you know, if you're competing, it's worth it, you can do it. And if you're not competing, it's not worth it. The person who's just training for fun might feel the need to use steroids just as much as the guy trying to win the Mr. Olympia title. Do you really think that just because you're trying to win another title that you think you need to use steroids more than someone else? Do you really think that Jeremy Bundia or Chris Bumstead or Sam Sulik need steroids more than that average guy that just wants to impress his girlfriend or perhaps get a girlfriend for the very first time? Perhaps no one's ever dated them in their life. They're a 30-year-old virgin. Hey, I can't get a girl. If only I had that physique. Do you not think that they're perhaps tempted to take something, perhaps even more so than Chris Bumstead? Of course they are. And so my advice, please cancel out the noise. Focus on yourself. And remember, there are natural alternatives, although not going to build as much muscle as steroids. At least they can do so in a healthy environment. Supplements like 
Acti Builder and Turk Builder, as well as GO2 Max for improved cardio and Acti Builder, Turk Builder to build muscle. These two in combination can in fact make amazing improvements in your physique. Remember, if you're a teenager, you don't need any of this. You got plenty of newbie gains. Save the supplements for when you reach a plateau. And that is not when you're a teenager. Wait until you're older. Also G tests and of course your regulars like creatine and beta alanine, protein bars, you name it. Head over to my website code greg 15 percent off remember if you have no money at all that is okay get over to the website we're giving you close to a 50 page free diet and training program i've had people saying i can't believe this was free all this information for free makes no sense other youtubers would charge a hundred dollars fifty dollars whatever did you get the program close to a hundred thousand people have and so if you're interested free diet and training program please click the link in the description. And don't forget, we have a clothing line, supplements, cookbooks, training books, coaching plans by me and my team. Head over to my website, ending it here. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment to boost the algorithm. Don't forget to watch one of those two bloops. Can't wait to continue to make more videos for everyone. It's been a blast. Love meeting all the fans at the various competitions, the Arnold Classic in the United States, as well as in the UK. Can't wait to meet more of you at various shows throughout the years. And until next time, I am out.